in the morning. They're just so happy to see us. The Yahoo all the time. It's a, a sign of greeting. Pablo and Pedro, they are literally the most affectionate animal I've ever seen. It's not enough to just be laying next to you. They have to be on you. We call them the productivity suckers. I couldn't get anything done. If you stop petting, they'll look at you like, what are you doing? <laughs> but in the beginning, I had no idea what we were in store for. They were a rehoming opportunity. When they came to live with us, they were really skittish. Other people had them as pets. And they don't realize how much work they are. But at that point, they wouldn't have survived in the wild. So I did a lot of researching and we found the vet. We found out putting their cage right in the middle of where the action is in your house is really helpful. So they were constantly hearing our voices. And then they started coming around. They like to burrow, that's what they do in their natural habitat. So we would keep finding them in the laundry baskets. And then they would be sleeping there. They are so sweet. They won't leave you alone. Pablo follows me around everywhere I go. He will actually physically chase me around. It's nonstop. Pedro loves to be under your feet. And he'll yahoo. That means that he wants me to come in. If I'm watching a movie or I'm homesick, they'll lay with me for the whole time I'm there. So I found this hoodie and I started putting them in there and they loved it. They would sleep in there as long as I would pet them occasionally. And, oh, we were in love. <laughs> they liked to go outside. We would take them on walks. They smell the air, explore. They're a lot of work and they're not for everybody but we signed up for it and they're one of the best choices I've ever made. <laughs> I need that back, please. Uh, 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 uh. Oh. Give me that back. He'll try and steal stuff from us, like sponges or cleaning brushes. He stole the padlock to his Avery. Give that lock back. And he will want us to buy them back off him. And if we're not giving him enough attention, then he turns into a bit of a brat. And say, look, give me attention now. What? Why are you being a brat? Well done. Well done. But when we got him, he was hyper violent towards people. Loki was bought by someone that didn't really know what they were doing. He is a captive bred raven. He wouldn't be able to fend for himself. So the family returned Loki to his breeder and he contacted us. He came to us very aggressive, very scared of everything. I established the reason for this is that he had been badly mistreated. So I had to change my tactics slightly. I would sit in his aviary for maybe an hour a day and not do anything and just have some food on me. Hey, do uh, Do you want some mango? Uh, yeah? So he started to allow me being in his bravery. And the times when he was really nasty to me, I would leave the Avery, not giving him any attention. And once he worked that out, he would put his head down and actually apologize. That was an amazing moment. I remember putting my hand out to stroke him and I'm thinking, I'm going to get bitten, I'm going to get bitten. And when he allowed me to do it, it was a huge excitement. Good boy.
I thought to myself, this bird is forgiving humans now. Now he's become much more tolerant to other people. He can be quite cheeky. He does the gua sound to get my attention. And then we started saying it back to him. And he finds it hilarious and keeps doing it. He is a free flying bird. He goes off and he flies around and he comes back to us when he's good and ready. Hello. You come home. And it's night and day in terms of the comparison. You can help animals. They can bounce back. Are you being little? I had no idea something could even look like that. Look at this baby. He doesn't have a normal cat body. His legs are so small. So he does take very small baby steps. He has a grumpy little face. His jaw's a little bit crooked, which is why that tooth sticks out. Ozzy lives at the clinic. People coming in and all of a sudden they're, oh my God, what is that? Oh. <laughs> but mostly everyone just can't get enough of him. <laughs> but when he was brought in, he was in pretty rough shape. And it was a little black kitten screaming, crying. He had conjunctivitis. He had baby lice all over him. And he wasn't growing. So we x-rayed him and realized it was a dwarf cat. He needed a lot of care. So we figured a vet was the best place he can get it all for free. We have the stray yellow as well. He came to us first. And when Ozzy came to the picture, yellow has always been very gentle. When we let them interact, he would follow Yellow around the clinic. He sees Yellow scratching on the rug and he has to run over and do it also. Yellow definitely taught him the ropes of how to be a clinic cat. He's probably Ozzy's best friend. So if you've had a bad day, they definitely put a smile on your face. I call him Ozzy. A little distraction. He seems to know when we have sick patients. He'll walk up to the cage and just kind of stare. Like, hey, you're going to be okay. And he helps. He's so special. We love every part about that boy. When he was brought into our clinic, they were not aware that his size was a problem. Was so excited. He was over 130 pounds. Just a very round <laughs> dog. He was like a potato. And they were also not aware that he had a broken leg. From the pressure of his weight, he wasn't able to support his weight. None of us were really sure what to do with him. Buddy, he's a good boy. But I was like, I'm gonna take him home. The first time I loaded him up in the car, we got him on a tarp and lifted him up. There was definitely some stuff weighing him down. It was just really sad. So I give him a prescription diet. We started him at over a cup of food a day. 
and slowly I just lessen that out. He likes to nudge for food a lot, but I'm just like, oh, I know you want food and just being stern with it. We were able to monitor him in the vet clinic. We would all cheer him on whenever he got on the scale. Unfortunately, with every journey, there's always setbacks. Okay. But he never stopped. He just wanted to be up. And one day, he just stood up on his own and started walking. Come on, Bubba's. Come on. I was ecstatic, and he was happy too. He would break out of his kennel at night. I have a strange feeling when I open this door, Buddy is going to be right behind it. His doctor approved it. The way his leg was broken, it actually provided support. So there really wasn't another way for him. We actually have farm cats. They don't really mess with each other, but they will go into the trees right there next to him. It's super sweet. As soon as he started walking and moving, you could just see him like light up. Now versus when he first started, there's a huge change. He was very affectionate. He had energy. He's lost 50 pounds. He loves his life and I'm happy to give him that chance to really enjoy it. She just stands by the stairs and calls for him whenever he goes to work. Hello, bye bye. Bye bye. Whenever my husband plays piano, she has her special kind of headbang that she does. She knows that this is him playing and not just any song. And she never did that with me. So it was like this special move that she only keeps for him. She considers him her mate. It's like they're <laughs> lovers. Oh, bye bye. The first time she sat on his chest, she tilted her head like, give me scratches. And I felt how empty her life was before we had her. Hello, Popeye. It was during quarantine and I wanted to see if we can fit a cockatoo into our family. And I saw Popeye's profile on a shelter called Birdline. So the profile was there for at least a year and a half. I was wondering like, why has no one gotten Popeye yet? Because she seemed so sweet. So we set a meeting and we just instantly connected. Her previous owner kept her in an emergency place in order to travel. And it was supposed to be only two weeks, but after about a month, no one picked her up. Then after that, she was transferred to the Birdline shelter, which she waited for her future owner being us. <laughs> Cockatoos like to get around the house and know the house a little bit more. And sometimes it takes a while. But for Popeye, it only took two days. And what was so funny is that she instantly created a bond with my husband. She just sits on his chest for a long time because she has some sort of a separation anxiety. She just loves spending time with him. So whatever activity that I am gonna do with her, it's gonna take twice as much energy compared to my husband. Because Popeye was really alone in the shelter, she needed someone to love. So I just wanna remind everyone that adopt, don't shop. Because when an animal that has already loved someone else starts loving you, 
I can't tell you what joy it has. Martha! Come here! Hi! Martha, it was discovered, has the most serious form of dwarfism. This means that she had a six to 12 month life expectancy. If the sun wasn't in her eyes, she'd be able to stay asleep, you mm -hmm. know? We got Martha off of a Craigslist ad. We could determine that she was a dwarf, and um, so we wanted to be sure that we would get her before someone else. She needed serious medical intervention. Her front legs jutted out from her chest and then down and splayed out at a very wide angle. And you could see it was very painful to walk like that. And our vet told us, that early intervention was going to be the best way to help her with her legs. We could try to correct her legs with surgery, but there is no guarantees. The other option was to do braces on her legs, and that came with its own set of challenges. And the last option was to work with our farrier and trim her hoofs. Even though that sounded hard to believe that that was going to work, that's the option that we chose. So we started treating Martha immediately. Our farrier came out every Friday and he would trim her hoofs. And basically what he was doing was he was trimming them in a way that would help to move them from outwards and start to slowly bring them in. All done, all done right here. <laughs> <laughs> when we started to notice Martha's legs starting to come in, we would look at each other like, do her legs look a little bit straighter? And once we started to notice this change, seemingly immediately, Martha started to behave silly. <laughs> she has had this tremendous personality she started to hop around. She did these little bunny hops. But she wasn't one who would just go lay down and be like, my legs hurt. Martha's three and a half years old and she'll be four in October. She has outlived her life expectancy. Martha's personality was always this joyful little soul that found happiness in every single day, despite her physical challenges. And God willing, we don't see her slowing down. What's up, mamas? Every single time I grab my helmet, they already know what time it is. And they're crying at the door. They would start running around and turning circles. Let's go. They just want to jump into their bag and get zipped up to go. You excited? Let's go. While we're riding, they'd look around and explore and enjoy the wind in their face. We get a lot of smiles. when life brings you down. They really hope at the time. I got a little sad, depressed. I went through a breakup. Breakups are never easy, but Mom and Butters got me through it. So I just hung out with the dogs all the time. I mean, they just made every day feel a little more fun. <laughs> you don't want to give you a kiss. Those two are tied to me. We used to take them out on car rides. They went hiking with us. Whenever we went anywhere, we took them. Mom and Butters weren't really scared. So we transitioned over to the motorcycle. We put goggles on them to protect their eyes. I put their helmets on. And I grabbed their bags. 
that was a whole different experience. Mama really liked the front. And Butter's a little bit more shy. I've never had to train them, but they don't try to jump out. They don't try to escape. That was a lot of fun. We stick together. There's nothing like an animal that loves you unconditionally. No matter what you do or no matter how bad of a day you've had. Riding with those two is the best thing. Everyone told us that we are crazy and told us to get ready for all the shenanigans of the Bull Terrier puppy. So when we got Chico, they were right because the first two years were really hard. Come on, Chico, let's go. As a puppy from the start, he was just super high energy. He would barely sleep, he would barely nap. One day we came home and our blinds were completely destroyed and he would be pretending like, oh, it wasn't me. But it was all worth it. We always wanted more dogs. We were kind of waiting for Chico to be more mature and wished for that another dog would be getting him to calm down. So when Chico was two years old, we got Sadie, our golden retriever, and it was one of the best decisions. Sit down, roll over. First they were sniffing each other and they just started to play. We gave them a ball and they were running around and probably about 20 minutes later they were cuddling. So it was amazing to see. So I was just scrolling through Instagram and one of my friends posted about Carla. I contacted the rescue and we decided to take Carla. Both Chico and Sadie, they just loved her from the very first moment they met her. First is Chico. And then it's Sadie, then it's Carla. And believe it or not, Chico is very mature now. It's gonna be seven in January and he's super calm, he's very laid back. Of course he still plays from time to time, but he's amazing. To describe them as a trio, they definitely happy and all three of them love each other. But when we got Chico, he just got into every trouble he could. We had to put our shoes away, all our furniture was chewed. But now he is definitely the best older brother. When they play, Chico will teach them when to stop playing, when it's enough. It was one of the best things we ever done for Chico's friends. Smile. I thought my German Shepherds were my only babies. But then, Baby River was born. Wherever my baby goes, our dogs always follow her. If River goes on a hike, the dogs tag along. If she gets in a bath, the pups have to jump in too. They keep an eye on her like she's one of their own babies. And sometimes, I think River believes she's one of them. River! Wait! No, no! River, look at me. Go outside. She even started behaving like a puppy. We have seven German Shepherds. With seven unique personalities. And we thought, if they don't get along, it will be a disaster. So we made sure to give them a proper introduction. 
We started off slow. My husband brought one of River's swaddles for the dogs to sniff, and the dogs were all over it. They were super curious about our smells. Want to see the baby? Okay. So when River came home, they were beyond excited to meet their little sister. They did a lot of sniffs, licks, and tail wagging. And in no time, they accepted her as one of their own. She loved to spoil her new dog or siblings with treats. And it's incredible to see how gentle she is with them, and they are with her. But out of the whole pack, River does have a favorite. Can you lay down? What a good boy! What a good boy! Roman and River are like two peas in a pod. He will follow her around the property, making sure she is safe. And if River ever wanders too far, he will herd her back to the house. He loves giving her kisses and making her laugh. Can you go give us to Roman? Where's Roman? And it's a friendship for the ages. Say good boy, Kai Kai. Some people think River will get sick if she lets the dogs lick her. Others think she will get bit. Our pups met River when she was just a baby. And it was a nervous moment. So we're always careful when she's around our dogs. River, come. Kai Kai, come. But if you show a dog love, they'll show you love back. And I could not be more comfortable with River and her furry friends. When we saw that and she came back to visit, we were speechless. Darling would come every morning hanging out with our animals. She was a wild crow. She was free to come and go as she pleased, but she just didn't really leave. She would fly and land on Sam's back and Sam would not be phased and just continue walking. Darling also became best friends with Gigi. They would sneak up on each other and then run away. I wasn't expecting it to happen. A while ago, I was out for a walk with Sam and we found a fledgling crow on the ground. I knew that her parents would be coming back to feed her, so I left her there. But as evening fell, I was quite worried about other predators that might be in the area. So I did put Darling in open box just up on our deck because I knew that her parents would still come feed her. Her parents did come back. Darling was safe. But one morning at the crack of dawn, she would come tapping at our bedroom window. <laughs> She wanted us to come out and play with her. It was too good to be true and I couldn't believe it was happening. But her visits became quite frequent and eventually she would come all the time. I had a dog, Sam, at the time and he was very interested in her. It was kind of like a love at first sight. He really just wanted to sit and watch her. And then when we were walking Sam, Darling would just go on Sam's back and it would be like she was on horseback and, and she was leading the way. He was very gentle and she just became not scared. So she would hide her food in Sam's fur. Gigi came to us almost two years ago. That was a bit of a slower friendship. They would have a lot of interaction through the window. The first time Darling met Gigi, I was a little nervous, but to my surprise, they actually did get along. What usually would be considered the enemies, they were best friends. Unfortunately, one morning she didn't tap on my window and so I knew that something wasn't right could hear all the crows alarm cawing and I saw that there was a bird of prey in the area. 
and I found some of Darling's feathers. Darling passed away. It was the worst day, a grief that I've never felt before. But it was also a really important lesson. Be grateful for a sunrise and a new day that you get. Just never take anything for granted. Thank <laughs> you.